All right, gamers, welcome back to Game Master Dungeon. I am Brian, your Game Master. So today's GM tips, we're gonna, we're gonna harken back to the starting as a GM uh, video that I had. I kind of gave an overview of a lot of things you're gonna wanna cover like in the beginning when you're first getting started. Um, what I wanna cover today is going to be understanding your players. So we. Previous video we talked about the types of players that you're gonna potentially have in your game. Uh, one of the things you want to do, definitely, before you start running a game is really understand what types of players you have in your game um, and how you're gonna deal with them. Um, how you're gonna give them what they want, how you're gonna drive the story around their characters, you know, go back to the whole pie thing. All right, everybody's got to get a little slice of the pie, you know, so they're not so they're not hungry, you know, because when people get hungry, like in gaming, they tend to that type of gamer really starts to come out. So we're assuming that, all right, so you've you've picked your um, your game, Dungeons and Dragons, you're gonna play Death Watch, GURPS, whatever it is you're gonna play. So you've decided on that. Uh, you've got characters made uh, with each player, you know, so as a GM, I like to, like I said, sit down with each player and they tell me what they want to play. I make some suggestions and things like that. Based on kind of what they like, what they like to play and what they're looking for, you can kind of get what they're going to be like when they game. So this is really going to help you to drive your story and to keep everybody motivated. You're going to want to have your... Your, your your DMing book, you know, I've got my, it's got all my notes and some characters and sheets and stuff in here. Take notes about everybody, you know. You got four or five players, everybody's going to want four or five different things, you know, take notes on that. So then, definitely, you know, like a couple of weeks before your first game. Or maybe, you know, maybe you're going to make characters and you're going to play the next day. I would definitely take it slow with your players, start your first game, start it slow, make introductions, all the characters, all the players, even if you're all friends and you've all, you know, played games together, and but really uh, take it slow, start small, develop each character, let everyone kind of, let everyone kind of show off in that first game, kind of their character, what they're good at, what they're not, um, the dynamics that you're gonna, you're gonna see, and maybe the areas that the players as characters are going to struggle with because you can't always make them not struggle you got to give them some challenge because challenge drives evolution um, not only as a character but as a player as well you're going to want to as a GM your job is to make your players better to help them get better as players without them really knowing it you know, I've played with people that have come in as the noob to the group. You know, if you hearken back to the types of players, the noob is one of them. Everybody is a noob at one point. You know, halfway through your session, you know, they, they've, they've turned, you know, 180. You know, they, they know their game, they know their rules. You know, now but now they're going to transition into a different type of player. They're going to become the rule monger. They're going to become the clown or the ass or they're going to become the power gamer you know the min maxer so you gotta if you want to avoid that type of player help drive them in a different direction so really so sit down with them create their character understand what it is um, their characters are going to want help them develop that character give them some ideas if they're if you if they want to create a character that maybe doesn't quite fit with your game, really be like, well, this idea maybe doesn't quite fit, but let me offer this instead. You ever just give them hard no's, because then people are going to push back. You know, people don't like uh, to be told what they can or can't do, especially in a game where they like to play and have fun. They're like, well, this is how I'm going to have fun. Let them have fun, but be like, well, in my game, you know, maybe this doesn't work or this isn't allowed. You know, maybe magic isn't so prevalent, or technology, you know, like guns and, you know, high-tech armor and stuff like that, you know, in a, in a medieval fantasy, fantasy setting, eh, maybe not so much, you know. 
I mean, sure, it could be like some kind of alien tech or whatever, but now you're just the, definitely another video on your your theme and your feel and your genre and how not to have stuff out of place. But really just understand your characters that are playing in your game, understand your players and how they're going to play. Those characters are really going to help you not be surprised when a situation comes up. And then you can kind of tailor your encounters around said players and said characters. But always offer challenge. Don't be like, okay, well, they're really good at this. I'll just give them a bunch of that. Well, they're really good at this. Give them some of that, but give them those give them those little maybe the traps or the you know the dialogue bits where they've got to like coerce or maybe they got to sweet talk somebody. Sure, they can just roll dice and be like, well, you know, I rolled a twenty four or whatever. Does that get it? Make a role play. It is a role playing game after all. Is that's really going to help them mature as a player, you know, and that character. And so as the players mature and evolve as players, their characters are going to evolve and mature as characters. You're going to see a different play style. You're going to see their, their, they take their characters in different directions. Maybe the fighter just doesn't always take combat feats. Maybe he'll take, you know, some other stuff to maybe help offset some of his, I don't want to say disabilities, but um, his areas of opportunity, to put it. To put it that way, maybe the wizard maybe will, instead of constantly taking magic-based stuff, maybe take some social stuff. Maybe he'll improve his, you know, his physical traits, you know, to, to complement his, you know, his weak stamina or his constitution. You know, raise that a little bit so he doesn't get beat up so bad. But it's not a bad thing because, you know, not all wizards are scrawny little dudes that just cast spells. You know, as, as we as people, you know, we might be really good at one thing, but we have a lot of other stuff that we're really, that we're good at as well. But we have a few things that we're really good at. We're not really, really good at one thing and then we just suck at all the rest of it. No, because how would we get to where we are in life being that way? What if what we're really good at isn't prevalent where they live or in their job? They've got to change. They've got to evolve. So, recap. Understand your players, what type of player they are, understand your, their characters, how they're going to fit uh, into the story and how you're going to work around um, said characters to give everybody a slice of that pie. How are you going to make your players evolve and change and mature as players to make their characters evolve and change as well for the benefit of the story? And you'll see it. You'll see it. Trust me. Been doing this for a long time. You see a lot of people come in, do it one way. By the end of the game, they played a totally different, uh, totally different tune with their character. So, thanks again for coming back to the dungeon. I'm Brian, your game master. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, especially your players in your game. Maybe hey, show them this video. Maybe get the creative juices flowing. Um, until then. See you again in the dungeon at the beginning.